this video is all about ND filters, how to use them, and why you want to use them with the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So first of all, the DJI Mini 3 Pro is a great drone. It's probably one of the best values out there right now with drones. It's a super small drone. It weighs 249 grams, which keeps it just under that critical 250 gram weight, where in the United States, at least, you're required to register your drone if it's 250 grams or above. And in addition, it has a pretty nice sensor in here. The camera in the Mini 3 Pro does allow you to get some pretty good results. I've been very pleased with the results I can get from this drone, both with video and photo. But let's talk about how and why to use ND filters with this drone. First of all, the ND filters that I use is this mega pack right here from Freewell. I love these ND filters. This has every ND filter that I need in here. And it's a great value too. There's 16 different filters in here. And there's a lot of different use cases for these. And it's nice to just have this little pack right here with all the filters inside where you can easily take out the filter you need, put it on your drone, close the case again, and get back to work with the drone. In addition, what I like about Freewell is they include this nice little welcome packet that's got the installation guide for putting your filters on, which I will show you in a moment how to do that. Super easy on here. It's also got a lot of basics for video tutorials so you can learn about some of these different concepts if you're not familiar with them. And they also have a lens wipe cloth, which is great because the lens on the Mini 3 Pro is really tiny. And as a result, these ND filters are tiny. So having this cloth right here to wipe those off before you go and film is great to have. So let's talk about why you need ND filters for your DJI Mini 3 Pro. So there are two main purposes to use ND filters with a drone. The first one is if you wanna get that 180 degree shutter rule when filming video on your drone. And the goal with that is to have a shutter speed that's twice your frame rate. So with that, you're gonna get that cinematic motion blur. Things are gonna feel nice and smooth. There's gonna be a little bit of blur there with your frames. Every frame is not gonna be really sharp. It kind of feels better, looks better to the eyes. It's less jarring. And I think it adds a professional look to the footage. There's a lot of controversy about that though. Some people don't like that. Some like it to have those nice sharp frames. But if you wanted to have the cinematic motion blur, you have to have an ND filter. And here's why. Let's go to video mode on here and I will demonstrate. So in video mode right here, I am inside and even inside in artificial lighting, if I have my ISO set to 100 up here, which I recommend setting the ISO static to 100 when using your drone, if you're using an ND filter. And then of course my shutter speed here for 4K24, which I'm filming in, I need to set that to one over 50, because that is the closest to twice the frame rate. Technically one over 48 is twice the frame rate, but one over 50 is fine. But if I was filming in 4K30, then I would want my shutter speed at one over 60. And basically, how you know you've set static values is here where they're in yellow. Whatever is yellow highlighted is the value you've set. So if I change ISO to auto ISO, it's gonna highlight yellow. If I uncheck the auto, it's gonna highlight yellow on the 100, or if I went to 200, but I'm keeping it at 100 because I like having that lowest ISO when possible. So we're gonna go back to one over 50. And the nice thing down here, this is kind of a guide to help you know what strength of ND filter you need to use. So where it says MM down here, that's the current exposure. So currently the exposure, it's a little bit overexposed. It's about plus 0.3. Now, if I was outside in the sunlight, that is gonna be way overexposed with that shutter speed without an ND filter on. Because what the ND filter does is it blocks out a certain amount of light so that you can use this with that proper shutter speed. Because normally if you're out in sunlight in the middle of the day filming with this and you have the shutter set to auto, it's probably gonna be one over 500, one over 800, or even one over 1000 or higher, depending on how bright it is and if you're facing the sun or not. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to get the ND filter on. Now, what I recommend when getting it on is I recommend turning off your drone when doing that. 
And the reason is you kind of want the gimbal to not be active. You don't want to be fighting against the gimbal here because it can put a lot of force on this and it can break this. So putting on the ND filter is pretty simple. You want to hold this in place with a couple fingers. Then you take the lens cap here and you just twist gently to the left and it'll click, which would also be counterclockwise. Just pops right off. And you can kind of see some connectors right there that the ND filter you're putting on needs to go over. And if you look at our nice tray here, all the filters are labeled really nicely. So we've got ND16, ND32, ND64, ND128, 256, 512, 1000, and 2000. Then down here, we have some NDs that combine with some different features such as polarizers on here. And polarizers really help, like if it's a really bright day, it helps you really get those deep, rich colors. So on a bright sunny day, I actually recommend using one of the polarizer ones down here. I find I really like how those look. I'm going to use an ND8 with polarizer. And the way you put it back on is you kind of line it up at an angle right here. And you basically, you wanna make sure these catch and then you're gonna just twist it. And you wanna make sure it clicks into place and you wanna make sure there's no gaps there. So around the ND filter over the lens, there shouldn't be any gaps between there. It should be sealed tightly all the way around. So I'm gonna power the drone back on now. And we're gonna take a look at that exposure value. And by the way, when you have your lens cap off, there are a couple extra slots down here that you can put it on so you don't lose it. I've just got my light up here and some lights behind me. And you can see just putting on that ND filter, what it did, it took that exposure value that was a little overexposed to plus three, took it all the way down to negative 2.7. So obviously in this type of artificial lighting inside, that would be too strong of an ND filter. Now, if I hold it up to my light, you can see there the value quickly goes to plus 2.3. So lighting really matters. But the nice thing about that is you can use that as your guide down there. So if you're outside, it's a bright sunny day and you don't know what ND filter to use. If it's a bright sunny day, I recommend starting with ND16 and then look at the exposure value down there. So right now it says the negative 3.0. You want your exposure value to be as close to zero as possible, ideally without overexposing. Let's say you put on ND16, you go out in the sun, and the value down there is plus two. That means it's overexposed still. So if that happens, you wanna take off ND16 and try ND32 after that. If it's still overexposed, let's say ND32 takes it down to plus 0.7, then you wanna to go to ND64 at that point, and ND64 will probably take it to about negative 0.3. Anything that's in that negative 0.7 to zero range is usually pretty good. Because if you slightly underexpose your footage, you can always brighten it a little bit later when video editing. And of course, if you really wanna fine tune that, you wanna pay attention to which way your drone is gonna be facing. Because if you're facing the sunlight during the day, it's probably going to require a stronger ND filter than if you have the sun at your back or over one of your shoulders. And by the way, helpful tip, in general, unless you're capturing a sunset, if you're flying your drone facing away from the sun with the sun at your back, the lighting's gonna look a lot better in your footage. So keep the sun at your back or at a 45 over your shoulder as much as possible. Now in a practical sense, motion blur doesn't apply a lot when you're using your drone because usually you're far away from objects around you. You can't really see it. And that drone doesn't go fast enough to see that. But the use case that I use it with is if I'm flying close to the ground, close to trees, close to water, basically close to any object, that's when that motion blur is visible. Let me give a demonstration here. Take off. And of course, if we fly over the tops of some trees here, I'm gonna get up a little bit higher. You can see in a practical sense there too. Those trees will go by. There's not gonna be those sharp static frames. It's gonna have that nice blur to it. So 
So I kind of like that effect when you're close to trees like this. I really like how that looks. It feels a lot more natural, the movements do. And of course, especially if you go into sport mode, that's when you're gonna really feel it. So that is use case number one for wanting to use an ND filter. Use case number two is going to relate to photos and hyperlapses. So the reason for this in hyperlapse and photo mode, it's kind of the same, but a little bit different as well. Basically, the goal here is going for long exposure. So in photo mode, if you want to get a picture of a waterfall or water on a river or clouds going by, and you want them to kind of have that nice, smooth, dreamy appearance as they go by you, you want to have an ND filter on there, and it's probably going to be ND1000 or ND2000, depending on the lighting. So with this example here that I'm about to show you, I have a live demo of doing a sunset hyperlapse last night. And in this demo, I'm gonna go through the steps that I took to get the right ND filter and how I made the adjustments. So what I put on is I put on an ND2000 filter. So that filter filters a light all the way down to one two thousandth of the light that would be there without the filter. This is really important, especially when looking toward the sun and in order to get that really nice long exposure. So in order to do this, we're gonna go over here to hyperlapse mode and we're gonna go down here and I have my ISO set to 100, my shutter speed set all the way over here to two seconds. And right now, that does a good job of exposing it. We're gonna make sure we are under the free mode because we don't want the drone to be moving. We want it to be sitting there. We want the clouds to be the part of the frame that's moving and blurred. So what I find gives me best results is I want a five second interval. For the length, I wanna have this about 10 seconds. So I wanna get about 250 frames there. I'm gonna click the check mark. And for the max speed, that of course won't matter because I'm not going to be moving it, but I set it down to 0.2 miles per hour anyway. So let's get off the ground and get this rolling. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. So what we want to do is we want to kind of use this down here as a guide when setting our shutter speed. So I'm going to put it to the one over two right there. And that gives us a perfect zero exposure. Let's get our frame set up. And we are rolling on that. So it's going to take pictures every four seconds for the next 19 minutes and 47 seconds. If I could, I would have that shutter speed set to an even slower speed. So right now it's at half a second, which is good. That does have motion blur. It's not a really fast shutter speed, but ideally for that interval, it would be nice to have it at least one and a half to two seconds. Unfortunately, the two seconds is still overexposed, even with that. Now, if I was pointing away from the sun to the east sky, that ND1000 at a couple seconds would probably be perfect. Or if I was in the shade at a waterfall, I could probably go all the way up to the two seconds and it would be properly exposed. But in this type of setting, you typically cannot get the full two seconds. So ideally, if I could have, I would have had an even stronger ND filter, something like an ND4000. I probably could have gone to a couple seconds for the shutter speed. Now I still could have done a couple seconds last night. A lot of my scene there would have been properly exposed, but where I was looking at the sun, the sun would have been blown out. The highlights would have been, and I could have tried to selectively fix that later on if I wanted to, but I preferred to keep it a little bit darker to properly expose the sun because the sun and the sunset were my big focus with that hyperlapse. So if you want to do this with photos, like I mentioned earlier, what I recommend is using the ND2000 filter, which is this one right here. You wanna do that because you wanna get your shutter speed as slow as possible. 
because what the shutter speed is going to do is it's going to keep the shutter open for that amount of time. So if it was the one over two like I used last night, it's going to keep the shutter open for a half a second. A half second is good. It will capture the motion in there and blur it. But two seconds is even better with something like a waterfall or water or clouds because it's going to have that nice, really smooth appearance with it. So I'm going to pop on the ND2000 filter here and give a quick demonstration with the settings on here because you have a couple different options with this. And we're going to go to photo mode here. And of course, what mode you use is up to you. But when you're doing photos, I often like to do the AAB, which is the auto exposure bracketing. And what it does is you can tell it to take up to five different photos with different exposures. So it'll do a couple photos that are overexposed. So they'll be really bright on their own. It'll do a couple that are about properly exposed and it'll do a couple that are underexposed. And then what you can do later on is you can stack all of those and get an image that has really good dynamic range. Gives you a lot more flexibility later on when editing. But let's say you did a uh, 48 megapixel photo here. And what you'd want to do with that ND filter is, first of all, if you're outside, I recommend taking the ISO down to 100 unless it's like really dark out and you need to boost it. But ideally, you want the shutter speed to go as slow as possible. We want to manually adjust the shutter speed. Now, one of the limitations with the Mini 3 Pro is you can only go as slow as two seconds for the shutter speed. But as you can see here, even with that two second shutter speed, it's still not slow enough. We're still showing negative three here. If I hold this up to the light, see how that adjusted? And it went to plus one down there. So lighting really matters. If I was holding it up to the sun, two seconds would actually probably be too slow. It would be all blown out and washed out. But using that setting down there is your friend. You really wanna see how it's exposed. And just like with the other example, you wanna to try to have that exposure value as close to zero as possible or a little bit underexposed, such as negative 0.3. So if you want to get the very best creative footage from your DJI Mini 3 Pro, I definitely recommend picking up a pack of ND filters and trying them out. These really expand the possibilities of what you can capture with this drone. And these give you a lot more artistic flexibility, especially with those hyperlapses. When anything moving in the hyperlapse has that smooth flow to it, it just looks and feels a lot better than if it's a hyperlapse with a fast shutter speed. Every frame is a little bit too sharp, at least for my liking. It just looks and feels a lot better when things are smooth going by you. I have linked to this Freewell ND filter pack in the description below if you want to check it out. I love the Freewell brand. I've used a lot of their ND filters over the years, both for cameras and for drones. And I really love the quality to value of these. Until we talk again, happy droning.